Today's video is mostly going to center around a new type of diagram that we're going to talk about called a drop and pull diagram. At the end of this video, I want you to be able to say, I can interpret a free body diagram to solve a Newton's second law problem. And remember, um, a Newton's second law problem is just one of these, where you're using one of these formulas. And I want you to be able to analyze what happens in a drop and pull experiment. We're going to be doing some experiments with carts and uh, the motion detector, like we've done before. And I want you to be able to know what's going on, and we're going to be using a drop and pull system to analyze Newton's second law. But one thing that I want you to be able to do is to be able to recall things that we've learned before. And in our last unit, we looked at free body diagrams. And here's an example of one free body diagram with a cart. We have a normal force and a force of gravity, and you can tell by these vectors that those forces are equal and opposite. Let's read what the problem is telling us about the force of friction and the applied force. So it tells us a 2 kilogram cart is being pushed with an applied force of 15 newtons. If the friction force is 5 newtons, then determine the acceleration of the cart. So let's fill in what we know. It tells us that the mass is 2 kilograms, and that's right here. Now the forces I'm going to write on our free body diagram. The applied force is 15 newtons, and the friction force is 5 newtons. Now ultimately we want to figure out the acceleration, and the units for that is going to be in meters per second squared. We'll use this formula for Newton's second law, but now what we need to figure out is what do we put for force? Let's look back at our free body diagram. We have a 15 newton applied force pulling the cart to the right, but a 5 newton friction force pulling the cart to the left. So what we want to write in here is the net force. To figure that out, we have to um, figure out the resultant vector for these two forces. To do that, we take that 15 newtons, subtract the 5 newtons, since 5 newtons is going in the opposite direction, and we get a net force of 10 newtons. That's what we can plug in up here. So let's do it. I'm going to pl uh, plug in my 10 newton force on the top and my 2 kilogram mass on the bottom. And now it's really easy. Our acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. So you might see a diagram like this and be intimidated at first, but don't be. You got this. We're going to be doing a few labs where we use our cart system and our smart pulley right here. And we're going to be applying a tension force to the cart to get that cart to accelerate. How we're going to apply that force is by hanging a mass to a string that goes around a pulley. This is what I mean by a drop and pull diagram. Before we get into that, I think it would help if we look at this example. So it says, determine the acceleration of a 5 kilogram cart that is pulled with a force of 30 newtons. Assume that there is no friction. So some key things that we need to know in here are these two numbers, that the mass of the cart is 5 kilograms, and that the force that's pulling the cart is 30 newtons. That's asking us to find the acceleration. And we know that the units for that are going to be in meters per second squared. So this problem is pretty straightforward as a Newton's second law problem. We just plug in the numbers that were given and use our calculator to divide 30 by 5 to give 6 meters per second squared. Now if this cart was, uh, if a 30 Newton force was applied to this cart with a drop and pull diagram, we'd have a different story. Let's check that out. So in this case, a 30 newton force is still being applied to the cart, but it's being applied to the cart by a 3 kilogram mass being hung down here. So this says determine the acceleration of a 5 kilogram cart that is pulled by a 3 kilogram hanging mass with a force of 30 newtons. Assume that there is no friction. So what do we got? What do we got going on here? The mass of this is 5 kilograms, and the force on this is 30 newtons. 
Now here's the trick about a drop and pull diagram. This 30 newtons of force is because of gravity's pull on this 3 kilogram mass. So this pull of 30 newtons is not only on this 5 kilogram cart, but it's also on this 3 kilogram mass. So to determine this, we need to take the mass not only of the cart, but of the hanging mass as well. So how we would solve this is we would say that the force of um, the force that's being applied is 30 newtons, but it's being applied to this whole system. So when you see a drop and pull diagram, you need to take the mass of the whole system. And in this case, that's 3 kilograms plus 5 kilograms. So what we end up having here is 30 newtons divided by 8 kilograms. And if you run that through your calculator, you'll get, sorry, 3.75 meters per second squared. You'll have plenty of practice with this on your problem set, so don't worry if you're not totally getting it right now. But let's check out one more before this video ends. Determine the acceleration of two blocks if block 1 has a mass of 4 kilograms and block 2 has a mass of 1 kilogram. And it asks us to determine the acceleration. Now we're going to use this formula. We don't know what the acceleration is. We know that the mass is going to be 5 kilograms, but we're not given a force. Now this is where the formula that we used to determine weight is going to come in handy. So the force that's going to be on this drop and pull diagram is going to result from the force of gravity on this one kilogram mass. And if you remember, the force of gravity is the same as weight. So weight is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So in this case, it's going to be one kg times 10 meters per second squared, acceleration due to gravity, and the weight is going to be 10 newtons. So the force that's going to be pulling on this cart is going to be 10 newtons. And that 10 newtons is not only going to be pulling on the cart, but it's going to be pulling on this mass as well. So that's how, how we would find our force in this one. So it would be 10 newtons divided by 5 kilograms, and that would be 2 meters per second squared. So this one just requires you thinking another extra step and using another extra formula to find a quantity that's not given to you. Again, you'll be able to practice this and ask as many questions as you need to until you feel confident.